Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. On today's episode of Inside Look, we're gonna be tearing open an automotive air conditioning receiver dryer, a mercury thermostat, and LED light bulbs. I don't know when or where I shut the camera off accidentally. We just cut it open with the porta band just in case the camera didn't get it. A receiver dryer, if your vehicle has uh, air conditioning in it, it's got one of these in some shape or another. The purpose of the receiver driver dryer is to pull the moisture out of the air or out of the gas, sorry, not, a, not air, or the refrigerant, if you will. Water cannot be compressed. So you want to pull as much of that out of there as you can. Uh, and it sort of acts as a filter for other contaminants, particles, that kind of stuff. All right, so obviously I cut through this uh, filter bag here, desiccant bag. So our fluid would come in through one side, go through the tube, splash up against the splash shield, hang out in the pressure pot here, and then the clean fluid would migrate, or not fluid, uh, refrigerant would migrate up around those little passages around the shield here, and then back up to the exit. The desiccant here would be catching water, oil, that kind of stuff. And you know, the oil you want to cycle through the system and it would, but I'm assuming these little balls here are desiccant of some sort. Desiccant is just a fancy word for a uh, moisture collector, I guess. <laughs> Find them in all your electronics that you buy. Let's see if these things can pop open. These little balls here can be smashed open. And then obviously a, a mesh fabric filter of sorts. I'm guessing that went around the bottom or something. And that's it, that's our guts. Okay, next up is our thermostat. Okay, got to get this top cover off of there. <clears throat> got it. I know, ridiculous. So I'm going to try not to actually destroy this thing because I might actually end up using this. Uh, we heat our house with floor radiant heat or radiant wall heaters, I guess. Uh, we heat the house with a wood boiler, outdoor wood boiler, and we have six zones in the house and each zone is controlled with one of these. And I much prefer the old school mercury style thermostats than the newer electronic ones. I don't like the ones that have the LCD displays and all that. Yeah, they're fancy. Sure, you can hook up your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and all that crap, but I don't want my, my thermostat listening to conversations and connected to my phone and doing whatever it's doing. Uh, I like this. And these things last so long. The, they're just not prone to breaking at all, ever. Uh, there's very, very simple mechanisms in here. Uh, one of them, the most prominent, is the mercury filled tube, which is your switch. And then you've got this little spring in here. So it kind of looks like what, what's commonly referred to as a clock spring. But this is actually a bimetallic strip and they're made of uh, any combination of steel, brass, copper, iron. And what happens is as this heats up or cools down, one side of that, so it's got you know steel and say brass on the other side, steel one side, brass on the other they heat up and cool down at different rates. And like almost everything, as things heat up, they expand. And as they cool down, they retract or contract, except for water, right? So as that heats up and cools down, it rotates our little tube of mercury. And that mercury goes back and forth and either connects one set of wires on one side or another set of wires on the other side to either turn on or turn off your heat. I'll see if I can't get this main drive mechanism off of here. And it's also got another one of those bimetallic strips inside of here. It looks like a clock spring. I'll see if I can't get to it. But that's the actual thermostat or th uh, thermometer right there, that needle. This needle up top is our set point needle and that rotates with the knob. Okay, so there's our bimetallic strip right here. And that is held in by a rivet. Let's see if we can't pop it loose from the bottom. Well, it looks like I already broke it. I broke off my temperature set. So here we go. So this piece has a little gear on the bottom right down here. It's not much of one, but there's just a couple teeth right there. Those gear or those teeth engage with these teeth right here in order to put tension on our spring, then that spring rocks back and forth and you can see our little drop of mercury in there. 
and you can see all of our wires right here leading in, inside of that tube. Now you can see our tube of mercury with the metal wires in there. When the mercury is on one side, it contacts the wires on one side or the wires on the other side. Uh-oh, mercury just fell out. Oh, my tube broke. It kind of splattered. I watched it, but I thought there was a couple chunks of it. I didn't think it'd completely disappear. Oh, it didn't. It's still right there. It's that mercury. All these little specks you see right there are mercury. Is the little thing moving? Like that one right there, that's mercury. Oh, be dang. That's so weird. There's a bigger one. Okay, now let's move on to light bulbs. I've got a, a two of these, uh, whatever brand they are, the EcoSmarts. These are the ones I normally buy for my house. And then an actual Cree brand that I bought way back when. Uh, this is 100 watt. These are both the 60 watt equivalent. So we will go ahead and pop these open and see what they look like. Okay, so our bottom had the power in pin right there. The rest of this looks like it'll just pop right off. There's our lens. And that's our board with the LEDs. There's quite a bit of junk in there. Okay, here's the guts. That's it, just a little board. Back side of the LED panel. So those are our two power wires going in, it looks like. A couple resistors, capacitors. Well, it looks like a little transformer. Little, little transformer. Let's do the same thing on the uh, 60 watt, or the 100 watt equivalent. And you know what? Let's just break this off. Better mounted than the other one. There we go. So the board is a lot busier. The light board, anyway. Look at the difference there. And these are both Eco Smarts. So I got the same thing with the little pin. Actually, this one doesn't have a pin, it's just a soldered wire on there. So this one, all of the guts are on the main board, and there's a lot less to it. It has one capacitor here. That I broke loose, obviously. Compared to our other one, our other one had a whole bunch of capacitors, that little transformer looking dealio. This one only has one big capacitor and what's on the board. That's crazy. Not what I expected. Now let's see if they, these look any different than the Cree. Cree board is labeled Cree. All the contacts look nice. Just the quality of it looks better. Now granted, this one was a bulb that was used for many 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 years and stopped working finally i'd say the cree build construction is definitely better and you can see all the extra usually those are diodes i think you can see all the extra stuff on this board compared to the eco smart 60 watt equivalent a lot more stuff on the cree board all right, everybody, so that was, uh, that was kind of fun. But if you do have suggestions or uh, ideas for this series, please throw something down in the comments. I'll get back to you, and I can probably scrounge something up. So that'll do it for today. I appreciate y'all checking out the channel. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons if you like this kind of stuff, and we'll catch you on the next one.